Greetings, I'm Russell, KV4S, Kilo Victor 4 Sierra, and um, I haven't done one of these videos before, but um, I've been getting back into the hobby with uh, DMR, D-Star, and uh, some of the digital uh, uh, setups for ham radio, and I uh, wanted to show off a little bit of uh, the Nano Spot. It's the most recent addition that I've made to my, my setup. And I uh, thought it'd be kind of cool to show it off and how I got it to run mobile. So to back up a little bit, uh, what, I, what I like about DMR is uh, you can do private calls. And uh, you can have group calls uh, on the radio. It's a little bit easier to accomplish if you have a, a hot spot. And uh, basically what a hot spot is is... Uh, little personal repeater is what is, is really more of how I think of it but uh, the term hotspot is being thrown around but um, it's really uh, a way for you to get your signal through the internet without going through a repeater or or, um, or another get type of gateway I'm pretty much a traditionalist when it comes to ham radio I, I still believe in the uh, the radio to radio conversation but um, you know the internet is still kind of the backbone of the communications that we currently enjoy and um, it, it's always made sense to me going back to the early 2000s late 90s when uh, some of the echo link and IRLP was was first coming into the scene uh, being able to link up your repeaters over the internet made a lot of sense and really opened the door uh, to worldwide communications without elaborate antenna systems and without a really expensive radios and uh, since I kind of got out of the hobby I wouldn't say got out of but I took with kids I really got pretty much inactive I would say I, I still participated in our alert group here in, in town but um, that was about it. I really wasn't on the air after I, I got rid of my, my last vehicle where I had all of my HF equipment installed. Um, I didn't I didn't put that stuff anywhere else. It's kind of sitting in the closet right now. But um, the, uh, the digital is in the internet linking is, is sparked my interest right now. There are a lot of options and uh, inexpensive radios and uh, you don't need really anything but a but a walkie-talkie now or HT, and uh, and that's it. You can talk anywhere on it, and it's uh, as clear as I'm talking right now on this uh, on this video. So as far as the the hot spots or the little mini repeaters, I've got the uh, the open spot. It's one of the I would say one of the easiest to set up, easiest to configure, and. Uh, it just plugs into your your router in your at your house and uh, you can talk on it and uh, do whatever you want to do it, it has multiple modes on it uh, D star fusion uh, DMR and um, it doesn't have p25 but I don't know a lot of hams that are, are doing that and those are you're getting into more money when you're talking about p25 but uh, the nano spot which is my other hot spot it will do uh, P25 and um, it's got wireless connectivity built in for the, for your Wi-Fi so it's a lot easier to take mobile than the open spot I, I know a lot of people are, are setting up uh, TP-Link wireless routers with their open spot to take it mobile um, I consider doing that but that seemed like another step and another piece of equipment that just uh, kind of impacted your portability a little bit not not a lot but a little bit um, the nano spot is really cool uh, because all I need to do is power it and uh, I can use my phone's hotspot as a way to get my internet access and as long as I've got internet I've got the connectivity and a lot of people argue well what happens when your internet goes out well then uh, where I live I'm I've, I'm within three maybe four miles of, of both a D-Star and a DMR repeater 
And uh, to access those, you know, I'll need to run my, my hand tall kit at five watts or more to get out and actually get into the re repeater system legibly. But um, that really taxes the battery. So that's another advantage to a hotspot is you can run your about your lowest power that your radio can do and, uh, and you're still on the air. But uh, back to my point, the... Uh, the repeaters are so close you know if, if our internet backbone was to go out the DMR system here in town is uh, is microwave linked so uh, we do not need the internet to communicate around the city uh, we've got more multiple systems but the three the three main ones for Birmingham uh, are microwave together and uh, there's been some talk that those will be uh, able to be swapped into uh, analog mode if there was some sort of natural disaster or, or man-made disaster that uh, that really did take down a lot of in infrastructure uh, hopefully our repeaters would still be on the air and, and linked up and you would have uh, town town-wide communications at that point and uh, our d-store repeater is uh, is pretty widespread too I'm not sure it's as wide wide ranged as the DMR set up because of the multiple repeaters but if um, I don't know as, as much about the D-Star backups but they all should be battery backup and uh, as long as you can power them you'll be on the air so um, the, the hot spots are, are just fun it's just a way to get on the air cheaply and if you're not within range of repeaters or don't want to run down your battery as fast that they're perfect uh, I walk around the house all the time uh, talking all over the world and um, it works in my basement it works outside it works inside it's uh, it's quite nice well I know I've rambled on a little bit so uh, let's go on with the uh, the more of my the more of my nano spot set up uh, I don't want to go into a lot of details about configuring the software there's a lot probably a lot better videos out there than mine but I wanted to focus on how I make how I make my system mobile and uh, some of the options you can consider if you're thinking about doing the same thing so this is the nano spot it's uh, as you can see it's pretty well constructed it's got your um, wireless antenna and it's got your your uh, UHF radio for your uh, for your um, your handhelds or your uh, radios whatever you've got so it's got the two two modes in it uh, it's got a nice little display you can see what's going on it's got a some LEDs on the side this indicates that you're scanning uh, if you've got multiple modes set up like I said I've got D-Star and DMR set up so it's scanning both uh, right now And um, on this other side, you've got um, a power LED and then a network connectivity LED that blinks as, you, as you're online. And as you can see, the only cord that's coming out of this is a power cord. And uh, that brings me to the, uh, the way I power it. I've got an Aki 26,000 milliamp uh, power brick I guess you could call it and uh, I, I got one that charged via USB-C or, or I'm sorry it uh, it's out USB-C or USB and it can be charged by USB-C in and the reason I went with C connectors is my my cell phone is um, is USB-C so um, this also lets me charge my cell phones uh, and other devices over USB if uh, besides just running the nano spot but I primarily bought it for the nano spot and um, I've used it already one time one time and um, a, a full charge it has four LEDs for the amount of power up to a hundred percent so I, I ran it all day long um, not not a lot of transmit that day but the system was on and uh, it still had the four LEDs lit, lit up when I got home at the end of the day 
and um, it didn't take long to charge back up so uh, this will definitely go all day long on uh, for your uh, repeater needs as you uh, as you go throughout your day so here's the case um, I bought a um, Apache uh, case uh, from Harbor Freight it was about $14 I believe I really didn't pay that much attention but um, it's got a great hard shell uh, protection for when if you're in the car if you're taking it actually taking it mobile it's got a handle on the end it's uh, waterproof it's um, rated uh, pretty high on mill mil specs I believe and um, really nice uh, inside uh, as you can see it's got foam padding and uh, the foam padding on the inside can be chipped away so you can uh, make it fit whatever accessory you got the example showed cameras um, but it fits uh, fits this system nice I got the smallest one they had and uh, it's it fits my system just fine so um, I've got my power brick seated in here and my power cord so here's the system in the box ready to be closed up um, I did not do a fantastic job getting the uh, the measurements, uh, not really the measurements, but the uh, the pieces chipped out. I didn't. Uh, I did better with the uh, power brick, but not the uh, not the nano spot. Uh, but I, I, it works. <laughs> it's not great, but it works, and uh, I feel like this uh, this is still going to protect my equipment uh, from sliding around. I've uh, supported it on all four sides. Um, and when it closes down it's uh, it's real tight a real tight fit so I don't see it sliding around in here either so that's it I can stick that under the seat I can stick it uh, in the back of the car wherever whatever kind of vehicle you've got it's got a nice carrying handle like I said it's uh, waterproof uh, you, this uh, controls the, the air valve and I'm really pleased with it it makes a uh, my mobile QSO is really easy and uh, pretty uh, pretty pain pain free. The uh, the software on the Nano Spot is is all web page configurable, so um, it uh, is you don't have to run any sort of Windows terminal server or <laughs> uh, uh, Telnet or virtual machines. It's just uh, once it's running. You uh, plug, you just uh, go on the web page and get it to work. The only thing I had to do with uh, with the PC was uh, configure the Wi-Fi initially. Uh, once you get the first Wi-Fi in, you can do additional Wi-Fi access points through the through the web page as well. So you're not if you can get that first initial setup going, you can uh, can do everything from any device at that point. So. Um, I know this wasn't the most professional looking video, but um, I don't have time for that, so uh, I hope it's uh, hope this was useful to someone, and and I hope to hear you on the airwaves soon. Uh, some of my favorite talk groups um, are the Alabama-related talk groups. Uh, 31010 is the Alabama link. It's uh, cross cross connected with. Um, with System Fusion, uh, DMR, D-Star, uh, a lot more systems I've heard of since getting back in are, are starting to go that route where it's multiple, um, it's multiple mode t uh, connectivity, so you're not locked into to one or the other. And I think that that's also what's appealing about the hotspot. You can take your your the radio of choice and still be able to talk where you want without having to f have four or five different radios. And um, uh, let's see, 3101, uh, we've got a, a DMARC repeater system here in town, uh, and uh, the hotspots are typically Brandmeister, so um, I've got access to both on 3101, and um, 31015 is, is Central Alabama, it's uh, on Fusion and uh, and Brandmeister, so those, those talk. Uh, I forget the the room number. I think it's 55 on on FSC002. But um, 
those are the three main ones. Uh, there is a, a South Carolina group uh, that's kind of dedicated to supporting DMR. Uh, I call it the Ham Radio DMR Talk Group, but I think it's called PD on the on the API. And uh, there's a few others: Repeater Book and uh, RF Finder or some good talk groups. Uh, they're not so active you can't have them program, but uh, there is some people on there. But otherwise, just find find what works for you and what makes it enjoyable. That's the that's the whole point of the hobby. And I'm hoping to expand DMR into into our alert group that works with uh, the National Weather Service for passing uh, storm spotter reports to the to the Weather Service, so they can they base their uh, warnings and watches off of those reports and um, they don't solely go off of of radar they uh, they they need the ground truth and that's uh, that's what we try to provide them so uh, 73 I'm Kilo Victor Force Sierra KV4S in Birmingham Alabama 73